Pepsi is the official soft drink of Highland Kalamazoo. Wrath Code Safety Supply. Providing all the air show signs and barricades. We're doing the crime prevention show uh, at uh, police and fire displays. It'll be going on at 1 o'clock. Little Squirt and McGruff, the crime prevention dog. Are all taking off. They're taxiing out. And the B-17 will also be taking off in just a little while. Kalamazoo. 1991 i know you'll enjoy it and it's a great way to collect autographs and do get those autographs in that book kind of fun to look back at year after year we've been saving for it really is fun to look back and remember some of our high points throughout the years here you come these are the the doc to remind you. and right side that's slowing to approach speed now with his hands just about waist high he may put his arms out to let that canopy fly again there he is as you can see the a10's twin general electric turbofan engines are smokeless and much quieter than other engines of comparable size 
This was an outstanding aid in achieving tactical surprise when attacking from very low altitudes. An additional feature of the turbofan engine is low fuel consumption. In the ferry configuration, the A-10 can fly over 2,100 miles on its own fuel. With in-flight refueling, it has deployed without any in-route stops across the Atlantic Ocean to the European theater. The A-10 was designed with survivability as a key feature. The pilot as well as the critical flight controls are surrounded by a titanium bathtub. The A-10 through the sky as it inscribes a figure eight. But first from the right, Captain Fu with the aileron roll. In its close air support role, the A-10 delivers devastating firepower to destroy enemy targets in close proximity to our ground forces. It can carry a variety of modern weapons to include the highly accurate precision-guided munitions such as Maverick missiles and laser-guided bombs. As Captain Fu completes this half of the Cuban 8, he will perform a level 360-degree turn. This tight turn radius allows the A-10 to operate effectively under marginal weather conditions. As he performs his level 360 degree turn, you will also note the simulated T-72 Iraqi tank out in the middle of the field. The turn radius of the A-10 in this maneuver is only 1,400 feet. This tight turn radius allows the A-10 to deliver forward firing weapons from long ranges and then turn to avoid overflying the threat. <laughs> Captain Fu will now position the aircraft for a simulated strafe pass. The A-10's 30mm Gatlin gun provides the pilot with a weapon that has a devastating effect on enemy tanks. It's 30 millimeter Gatlin gun. The 30 millimeter projectile delivers seven times the destructive energy of the more conventional 20 millimeter round. Captain Fu will perform a jink out when <laughs> You will note that by con constantly turning and As Captain Fu passes in slow flight, you will notice the color scheme of the A-10. This camouflage pattern and color scheme are designed to conceal the A-10. Pulling up into a closed trap. The aircraft's large wing area and very effective speed brakes allow the A-10 to land at airstrips never before available to jet aircraft. The A-10's maintainability has consistently been demonstrated by various tests and exercises in a wide variety of climates. 18,000 hours in the past 18 years. Kathy has been a commuter pilot at DC-9. Separation and perform a slow roll.
Keeping them right tight together. We'll turn that formation around with a one-half juvenile. Back up over the top. Pilot start on the back on the downside. And we'll roll the airplanes around to bring it back down the show line. from the right side, preparing for the formation loop, getting up on speed, Elliot says, up we go, and let's watch as the two and eight miles an hour. Down the back side, out of the fingertip, now pulling up into a line of rest. Kathy has uh, Elliot separate by about 100 feet as they go straight up to 3,000 feet. Pull the power back and the airplanes hang motionless in the sky for just a moment, then fall back on their own tails into their own smoke in the tail slide. Silver Bullet Jet Team, Kathy Gray in the lead, Elliot Cross, the new wingman, give you a beautiful formation pass and review. Get a picture of this. Assisting Brian are members of preparing to go to work. Riley. Torque rotor. This has a shrouded multi-bladed fan in the tail called a finistron. It sort of sounds like a bandsaw cutting through tin. Listen to it. Joe Drummel Smith's turning a helicopter on. Everybody wave to him. Everybody wave to Joe now. Wave your hats. Now there he goes. He's bowing to you like any good air show performer. Joe Drummel Smith, the gorgeous in-flight medical helicopter. At uh, that's some kind of beautiful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the gorgeous in-flight medical services folks would like to thank you for this opportunity to demonstrate the evolution of air medical transport from the Korean War to today. Our special thanks to Albion Area. Lockheed Super Constellation. 
a piece of flying history. So we got one more piece of music for you. Daddy. He's gonna make Daddy. I don't know how the plane can hold together when he turns it up. Here comes the B-24. We'll get the B-24 out of the way, I trust. We're going to get him out of the way first? Take him out? Okay. And uh, everybody wave to the B-24, Collins Foundation B-24. This is the airplane called the All-American. Hold, squat, and drop it. We're going to fly this for you. Everybody wave. One of the flight engineers, that's right, that is a lady, just wait, let Jerry go out and turn around and come back in here. And I want you to, I hope Susie will tell you a little bit about uh, Jerry Billings Supermarine Spitfire Mark 9. And uh, Jerry gets it right down low over the runway. And uh, we can just watch him up here tying the uh, sky into knots. Jerry had one of these, this flew one of the initial order of 310 production Mark I Spitfires, which had a pump handle under pilot. You're watching a guy who fought in the Battle of Britain flying the airplane here today. Jerry flew Spitfire Mark I, Mark II, Mark V, and Mark IX, and enemy operations from the 1st of 1942 until the end of 1944, flying in the United Kingdom and France, in the Blitz of Malden, and on D-Day 1944. Been flying Spitz continually for some 40 six years, even though the Royal Canadian Air Force declared him redundant, that means too old at the age of 42. He flew with such notables as George Buzz Burling and Hap Kennedy in Malva, 1942. Patty Finnegan, owned by Woody Woods of Carefree Airport, in Arizona. Both he and this beautifully restored Spitfire of Cliff Robertson's saw action against the enemy in World War II, which is somewhat of a record and is truly living history. We can do it again, and we will do it again. Jerry's flown experience gained in the design of high-speed Schneider Trophy racing seaplanes. The prototype fitted with one of the first Rolls-Royce Merlin engines, first flew in 1936. Built, although originally powered by the same Rolls-Royce Merlin that drove the Hurricane, later models were pulled by a Griffin engine, giving the Spit a top speed of 450 miles an hour. An airplane that appeared in a number of movies, most notably in the Battle of Britain, the Supermarine Spitfire, once again, the owner is Cliff Robertson. And so we have fought for so many years in the States. Admiral Short and Chester Nimitz were all preparing for a war that they knew would come, but it came sooner than they thought. Ladies and gentlemen, the date is December the 7th, 1941. The place is Pearl Harbor. The Akagi, the Kaga, the Hiryu, the Soryu, the Shokaku, and the Zuikaku launched and drew America into war. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, General MacArthur was preparing the Philippines for take place in the Philippines. It happened at Pearl Harbor. The date, December the 7th. Imagine yourself a young serviceman, a sailor vestal, the Arizona, the Nevada, part of that day. You're 18 years of age, high above now, as the Val Dive Bomber SM-20 started tearing apart American servicemen, ships, and buildings at Pearl Harbor. Just went down into the magazine that set off the magazine at the base of the Arizona. You just heard that huge explosion take place. The ship literally wrenched itself from the water, rolled over on it, ladies and gentlemen. That's exactly what happened as a result of this evasion of America's soil. The very next day, the war, out of fuel, unarmed, the place is going up in flames around me. I've got one landing gear that can't get down, and i got to put it on the ground. Time of the invasion, additional colors up. Imagine yourself being there, especially torpedo for running shallow ladies and gentlemen the Japanese knew a year 1941 a date which will live in infamy 
and that's what happened December the 7th, 1941. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, you're starting to see some of the great air 1941 through 1945. We went on with pride and love and devotion to our allies as we've never done before and never done since. But as after 1941 and World War II, we went to Korea, we went to Vietnam, we went to Panama, Grayson Desert Storm. Americans have given their lives and people are out. God bless America. On behalf of the Confederate Air Force and the group of the... God bless America. God bless our home and servicemen that have protected our freedom throughout these many years. God bless you. Fine job blowing the airport. How'd you like that? <laughs> yes, all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, while we're watching some of these airplanes fly by, that's the F-8F Bearcat. Only one of two F-8F-2s that are left anywhere in the world. Flying the P-47N, the Thunderbolt. There are a couple of the Razorback Thunderbolts, one of the later models that had the uh, had the uh, uh, full canopy on top, the full open canopy, specifically for the 8th Air Force. Let's watch here as the most notorious of all the World War II fighters, the, the beautiful North American P-51 Mustang. By uh, plane through, wearing the colors of the United States Navy Blue Angels is the uh, T-28, the Trojan, the airplane that replaced and another T-28, the third world country as a medium attack bomber. That's the, that's the, uh, the Curtis P-40 Warhawk. It's used in North Africa, where the paint was to sand and it wound up pink. So that's an authentic warbird color, flown, by the way, by Sue Parrish. That noise of the F and the F-4F Wildcat. Then overhead, the twin-engine airplane off to the left is the uh, flying record for piston-powered airplanes. There's old squat and drop of the Team G. This airplane belongs to the Experimental Aircraft Association in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. So let's watch them. You can tell the P-51's running with all kinds of high power settings. He's got the oil cool on. You like the Blue Angels paint job on it? Mizzou, 1991. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, hear the sound and feel the power of approximately 4,500 horses as the F-7F Tiger Cat approaches from directly behind you and departs the... Following closely behind the Tiger Cat right. To the left, the Wildcat is accelerating and begins its World War II. Performs a one-half Cuban eight maneuver. Ladies and gentlemen, pilot Chris Wheel. left. 
the twin engine powerful tiger in her area pulls up into the graceful one half cubit eight maneuver sometimes called the idiot loop this is john ellis fighter and this was the F2H Banshee, the one of the first operational jets aboard an 86 Sabre jet from North America, the United States first swept wing fighter. To turn and grunt right there. You gotta, oh, I'm gonna try to oh, be <laughs> communications and electronic warfare equipment. Our demonstration final, Lieutenant Jim Dog Bowser, our radar intercept officer, Lieutenant John Robo Robusto. The F-101, the Grim Reapers, home base. How do you like it so far? The F-14B Tomcat is built by Grumman Aerospace and is powered by two General Electric F-110 augmented turbofans combining for more than 56,000 pounds of thrust. The plainty of the Tomcat by executing a one-half Cuban 8. Oh my And manually select full wing sweep. The degree of sweep of the variable geometry wing is normally controlled by a computer called a mock sweep programmer. The wings fully forward are at 20 degrees of sweep. Full aft is 68 degrees of sweep. Watch for the right in knife edge flight for the F-14B Tomcat wing sweep pass. returns at 450 miles per hour to execute a 360 degree level turn with the wings at full sweep. In this configuration, the Tomcat takes on the shape of a delta and the large flat central surface between the engines, which the designers call a pancake, serves as an airfoil or lifting body, helping the wings to create the lift needed to sustain the turn.
350 miles per hour with the wings at full sweep or 68 degrees. During the roll, he will manually select minimum sweep and the wings will move forward to the 20 degree position. the turn. The air crew withstands six to seven times the force of gravity. Out of the turn, the Tomcat will enter a double Immelman, climbing to nearly two miles directly overhead. hundred fifty miles per hour about one third of its maximum speed capability let's watch and listen and roll, but this break is different. Watch the Tomcat roll right and turn left. In the Blue Angels, tuck under brake. <laughs> Lieutenant Bowser will now slow the Tomcat down while the Rio, Lieutenant John Robusto, calls the landing configuration checklist. Wings forward, landing gear down, flaps down, speed brake extended. Brake pump firm, final approach speed at 125 miles per hour. And Lieutenant Robusto has advised us, Lieutenant Bowser is going to perform a touch and go at center point. Listen closely to the precise power changes required in this simulated precision approach to a carrier. The deck has four wires, any one of which the tail hook may engage. Immediately upon touchdown, pilot adds full military power, and it's the arresting gear that stops the plane. In the unlikely event of a boulder, the crew takes off and goes around for another try. Upon complete of the touch and go, the Tomcat performs a dirty Immelman, demonstrating the tremendous power and superb slow speed handling qualities of the F-14B. And by the way, the F-14A Plus was renamed the F-14B on the 1st of June of this year. and maintain these aircraft to preserve our way of life.
those who stood with us. You know, God done shed his grace on thee. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much. Our Tomcat waving to you over here and bowing. God, we can't thank you enough for coming to High on Kalamazoo here in 1991. Let's wait for the Tomcat to get out of the way so we can hear ourselves sing. Hold on a second. gate which you use to enter your parking area. Yes. You'll be directed out to Portage Road at the northeast or correction northwest exit of the main parking lot. Flight line VIP patrons are asked to exit only through your desert. 131 is closed at Schoolcraft until 6 o'clock. Also, we are keeping control of the airport until 5. So if you flew in, you're going to wait till 5 o'clock. They won't even let you turn engines until then because we're going to be looking that we're going to probably have to be moving you back bit by bit because we've got to get the rest of these airplanes out. Some of these guys are actually like I think this uh, I think this Marine Corps FA-18 is trying to go to El Toro in California. So he's got to get out of here as rapidly as possible. And some of these other airplanes got to be gotten back to training command before uh, the Admiral discovers they're gone. f 9 f Panther and the paint, uh, VF-112. Okay, this is my uh, ninth show. Again, the folks that asked where my wife is, we got married at this show two years ago, and she is right now competing in the finals of the Mrs. Massachusetts America pageant. She's trying to... the Commodore's tent and meet your father. Thank you. Matt Zemlich. Matt Zemlich to the Commodore's Club.